after all this. I'm going, seeing you inshallah next time when Allah wills. But let me just point out to you some of the projects that we are involved with. Um, I think that uh, those of you who know about the exhibition, the 1001 Inventions, those of you who have seen it on the internet or directly, you will want it to come to Muscat. So I hope, inshallah, it will come to Muscat. There are ways of how to bring it over to Oman. Then we're doing a lot of research and editing and publishing in trying to find out you know, what has happened in the Muslim heritage uh, to sort of bring it out to the present day, so Muslim heritage in the present world. And then we are involved in what we call enriching a curriculum. How do you improve the curriculum? How do you ithra al manahaj dirasiya? How do you improve the curriculum of subjects of teaching so that the young people, when they are taught, men, women, girls, and boys, they get inspired. They feel they have a purpose in life. And they, they rely on huge amount of history that will propel them to the future. These things can be taught. They can be, you don't have to change the syllabus, but you can get some of these packages, they, you can add it and give it to the teachers, and they will inspire young people and show them how. Then the other, you know, the school pack. Then there is also a university pack, which the university could use for the university lecturers when they teach mathematics, when they teach physics, um, medicine, biology, and so on. They bring some of the nice bits from the Muslim heritage past to add into these so that it also connects the best of the past for building a better future. Similarly, you can have courses, select elective courses. It could be a module in university about you know, science and Muslim heritage, and some universities are doing that. And then we have leadership training courses. These, the, the beginning of my lecture when I showed you how these slides and how they work, these are given by some top people in, in management. And the last one is a pro, just started the project, which is called Businessman Women. Right, but in other words, it's actually, it's going to be, it's, it's being called not Elf Ikhtira wa Ikhtira, but Elf Tajir wa Tajir. And trying to have a community and the business people around the world, who, they have the characters of the old Omani Tujjar, of the Taqwa and the Amana and the Jara and the Rahma. Such Tujjar need to help each other, create similar people around the world. They do business with each other, men and women, right? And at the same time, when they do that, then they can cover the cost. Uh, they direct their zakah or part of their zakah to this very nice work that I think you agree with me. It's a noble mission which needs support. Thank you for listening and thank you for inviting me. May Allah bless you and inshallah we'll see you again when we come to Oman. Takbir. Allahu Akbar. Thank you very much, uh, Professor, for this very enlightening reminder and uh, some new understanding of what our history has been and what we could do inshallah to for a better future inshallah we can have 10 to 15 minutes inshallah question and answers uh, meanwhile i'm reminding you to fill the questionnaires inshallah and then uh, somebody will collect that so please there are wireless mics you can use that all those to air your questions inshallah any question? Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much, Professor, for your efforts. Uh, we are very much obliged. My question is how to relate. Shailal, can you stand up for just. I, I can, I can hear. Yeah. Okay. How? How to relate our daily deeds and da'wah as Muslims whether we are in Oman or abroad how do you relate sorry deeds and da'wah yeah I mean uh, as, as, an, as a Muslim as a, as a Muslim organization as a jami'ah or right no as individuals oh I see you know because I think the the Islamic organizations and mosque I'm, I'm very impressed with your mosque mashallah you know that, this is just unbelievable really. such a wonderful building and also the people involved in it wonderful people but 
this is very special and very unique, but they're not like what's happening around the world. Unfortunately, they could do with a lot of improvement, and a lot of development. Uh, and it, what, what comes to my mind, by the way, in one of the times of the Ottoman uh, in Istanbul, there was an advertisement for an imam. Right? You're in a Jama atmosphere, and sure, it just tells you how, they, they, how Muslim heritage in the past looked like. This advert gives a list of job description, the characteristic of the person they are after. Unbelievable. I don't have the list. I, I could get the list in here, but it will take me a few minutes to get that out for that. First, he has to be conversant with Quran and Hadith and so on, and knows Arabic. Obvious, isn't it? Right. Next one, he has to learn, he has to be conversant in another foreign language, preferably English and French. The other one is, he has to be familiar with subjects like physics and mathematics, right? The next one is, has to be able to practice active sports, right? Like horse riding and swimming and so on, right? The other one is, he has to be nice looking, right? <laughs> the other one is that his voice is melodious. Right. Believe me, this list is just incredible. It shows you there is civilization. If, if you, you know, I read this list in, a, in, a, in, a, in, in the UK. There was a British minister uh, and had all the imams and, you know, because they're worried about the Muslims, you know, what's happening and, you know, because they're causing a lot of problems. And so I said, there were all imams in there. <laughs> when I read this list, and somebody stood up and he says, you know, we will all fail that job. <laughs> we will not be able to get that job. <laughs> that was a thousand years ago. <laughs> so in terms of da'wah, as you have seen, of course people have to be good and tell others. But I don't think the Romani merchants, you know, they were giving sermons to the Chinese or the, uh, or the Indonesians or the... Or the Malaysians. I don't think they were giving them da'wah in the way we are doing. And these people, they have observed, like that bakal, you know, like that green grocer in Paris. That's what they did. They observed their deen and concentrated on modern ways of how to, you know, like they were obviously very active business people. They were good market people. They were. They used their own the the modern techniques, but. The moral code which they have, and they discipline themselves. It's not like many of us say, okay, do what I say, but don't do what I do. This is not right. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You know, the, and, and you know, and I know, there is a very dangerous hadith of the Prophet, وسلم, which is Hadith al Muflis, the bankrupt, when the Prophet وسلم, asked you know, his companions, he says, Do you know who is the Muflis? Huh? Many Muflis. They said, Muflis the bankrupt is the one who doesn't have the, the in Oman you call reals. Huh? He doesn't have the reals to pay to his debts. Yeah. He said, no. The Muflis is the one who goes to the day of judgment after he has lived all his life praying, fasting, huh? reading Quran, doing all this. And then he, went, he goes up on the day of judgment. And then all these people come up. And you want to And Allah this people, this fellow says he has taken my money, that fellow says he has, you know, uh, done this, he's uh, backbited me, uh, this one is, he hit me. And all these people come and they want their rights. They didn't get their right in the day, in the lifetime. So they get their rights in the day of judgment. And what Allah does, he takes from his hasanat, from his good deeds, give them to these people. Because he doesn't, he cannot pay money. There is no check, there's no bank at that time. Right? It's only your deeds. So you lose your good deeds. And then these people have, but then you run out, he run out. Then he takes the bad deeds of these people and start giving him their bad deeds. And then he ends up in hell. A poor man. You know, he spends all his life praying. Probably making da'wah also as well. Right? And then he ends up in hell. It's very frightening actually. So I think the deen and mu'amala is the secret of how da'wah happens in Islam. But I think you have here some fantastic mosque and you have a lot of people and I heard that many uh, non-Muslims come and become Muslim in here because it's a nice place. The people I understand give some good, clear, 
high quality material, the way they, were, they talk about things. So it is, you know, inshallah, a good thing. But I think development, we need to develop in our techniques, develop our lives as uh, Muslim people, and develop our society in science, technology, and, and give this understanding that Islam and Muslim heritage is not isolated. It's not only about mosques. It's about everything we do in life that wants us to take us from where we are to a better future. There's a young lady there, very enthusiastic, raising her hand. <laughs> okay. Hi, Assalamu alaikum. I want to thank you very much. We appreciate you coming here and giving us this beautiful lecture. And uh, I had a lot to learn from you. My question to you is that uh, you, you talked about development and about uh, you know, like Japan and Germany and about the economy and about Islam not being just um, concerned with mosques but with development. So I want to ask you um, money and like in the quest for uh, happiness, earning more money and Islam and living a virtuous life, sometimes it can get a little, I mean I want to know how can uh, making money and living a life for money integrate the spirituality aspect that Islam has to teach because I know a lot of people who are like if you're very spiritual you're not going to be ambitious if you're very ambitious you cannot be spiritual could you please highlight what is your perspective thanks yeah, you're right but the word because of the time element we have to go I lead you to the word which was called al-mizan you know Balance. Islam expects you to have balance. You have your share in this life, but don't forget about the final end, right? Uh, you know, they said, work as Do your, you know, your lifestyle and your work, right, and your earnings as if you're going to live forever. So don't, right. But then, for your other life, you have work as if you're dying tomorrow. And this balance is difficult sometimes because human beings, uh, they are human beings and they, you know, Allah creates them. This is their nature. They love money, they love, you know, sex, they love them. these, all these tests come in together. But this is where the, the faith and the religion will give you that balance. And th there has to be a conflict, otherwise there is no test. Yeah? The balance is the uh, way out. But balance only comes in is when you have conflict between two extremes. So you cannot just live all your life like what happens in the West. No God, no future, right? It's today and make as much money as possible to hell with other people. You bring in the children from the very first day as competitors. You have to be the best. You have to, it's fine to be the best. but. Don't, your competition with others, don't hurt them. What happens is that people are brought up as wolves. They eat you, right? No mercy. You know, it's a bunch of, you know, very active material consuming, you know, army in the world, which is going that way. And they come and eat you. And so, you know, when you behave like this without having a, a balance, something for yourself because Islam looks at you at you complete there is your physical being it's your body you need your food you need your clothing you need your beauty all this is your physical right and then you have your inside your soul your spirit some people look so beautiful so you know uh, but inside the their soul is so angry so hungry so black they look like a dead skeleton. And the other one is the mind. There are three. There is the physical body, there is the spiritual inside, and there is the mental intellect. And if you look at the way successful, when wherever there was a successful Muslim society, they had a balance between these three. There's something for the mind, something for the soul, something for the body. If you concentrate only on one of them, there is no balance. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. To be precise, so 
Uh, I don't take much of your time. Uh, first of all, thank you. So we move on from that. Uh, next thing, you live in, uh, in the UK and there's a lot of negative stereotyping with uh, Muslims about Muslims, about Islam. Especially at this day and age, we have all sorts of sects and uh, uh, what have you. Uh, my question is, when we started about bridging the gap from where we were in the past and the present, and going towards the future, how can we do that? And how are you doing it to, to get that message uh, across about all the positive uh, things that Islam brought to, to humanity? Well, sorry, in UK? Well, as an example, because you, you live in UK and yes. you are Muslim living in UK and you actually have all this uh, knowledge. How, how can we learn from that? We live in our own cocoon here mm -hmm. with uh, being in a Muslim country, with a Muslim society and what have you. Uh, when we look at the news uh, everywhere we go. We call Muslim places like yours as Muslim majority countries. We don't call them Islamic country. <laughs> It is Islamic, of course, but the best name is Muslim majority. We in the UK, we call ourselves Muslim minority country. So there is a fiqh of how to live as a minority. Muslims are experienced in doing that, not only in the West, but even in the past when they went to Habasha and, and so on. So uh, uh, Muslims have their own problems. There's a big problem going on in, in the UK and America and so on. And there, is, there are problems in the Muslim house to sort themselves out because they have huge competition and problems and greed and money and all that, and authority and, you know, the dynamics inside. But also there are problems outside the Muslim house. Uh, life is full of problems. Uh, but in terms of uh, producing exemplary good Muslim behavior, it's a very difficult thing to produce in the UK because the UK, they lack the connection with people like you. I remember when Armani's, I am impressed by, uh, I've had a lot of Armani students before, and they were very good. When I had my growing, my own children, one of my, the first boy, I have three boys and one girl. The first boy, he was lucky, because we had the group, we used to go out to camps, take them to camps, you know, a number of them. He was lucky to be in contact with two Romani PhD students. They had such an influence on him. Until now, after 25 years, they keep asking me, if you go there, Baba, please find out where the phone says, I'm not going to mention their names, and give them salam. They had an impact, their nice behavior. So if, if the, the Muslims from the outside world can connect with the future generation of the Muslims in the UK and the United States, I think the moral and good conduct behavior could be maintained. Equally, Muslims in the UK and in America and in Europe, they can be very useful for the Muslim world because they have the technology, they have learned some of the very interesting things, they become a good asset. So the idea is if you strengthen the relationship, I think we, it would be a win-win situation. Even the British government and the, and the American government, they will also win because when these Muslim communities are active in the Muslim world and trade and in transfer of technology and so on, they will prosper as well because they will open doors for business, right? Business in both ways. Yeah, is that okay? Yes, but uh, I wanted to relate with what you said earlier in terms of the past. Sorry? Our Muslim past, yes. our history. Yes. To propagate it in order to give us a, a, a positive image. What you've just said covers yes. most of what I wanted to hear. Yes. The past. Muslims in the UK, when they know about their connection with their own past, it empowers them. I'll give you a very simple example. One boy from the city of Leeds, 17 years of age, from Bangladesh, he had big psychological problems. He, he was about to commit suicide in 2006. His friends, they knew about the exhibition 1001 inventions in Manchester. That's when we first started. And they were inspired by it and see how, you know, oh, you know, so in fact we have a stake in this civilization. We are, we share the building of mathematics, algebra, you know, bringing all sorts of technologies that came from the Muslim world to, to this country. So we are not foreign to it. And so what they thought they should bring this boy into Manchester and he came. I am sorry, but I was not there when he came. What he did, he saw the exhibition and then he saw, 
Yeah? He saw, uh, uh, he looked at the book, 1001 Adventures book. And what he did is he took a chair in, in front of all the public. He stood on the chair, right? And he held the book and he says, I feel I am a human being now. Right? Look at this. Yeah. You know, when Ahil, and, and this guy, this guy, now is, is inspired. He wants to do science and technology. He wants to get the Nobel Prize. So this is his jihad. The problem is with such people with their attitude who will become vulnerable to an extremist group. And they will come and tell him, why do you want to throw yourself out of the window and then you will end up in hell? If you take with you some 40 infidels, right, you will end up with Hur al-Ain in paradise. It's a very dangerous paradigm. You know, it's, this is the sort of thing you are up against. So, so if you let people express their faith and their religiousness and religiosity by conducting, you know, by seeing some role examples from the past to build a better future for humanity, then you are making people alive. Now, I have been given this note, they remind me that I have a plane to catch very early in the morning. <laughs> so, what I suggest you do is you can, uh, those of you who have not seen the websites, what I suggest you can, you can go and visit these websites. The first one, which is our foundation one, is uh, fstc.org.uk, right? And uh, you can write to info at any of them, it will come to the office and then they will transfer. If you mention my name, you want to contact me. In fact, uh, mine is just instead of www, it will be Salim Salim at fstc.org.uk. Then there is this uh, for the you know, very exciting, popular, you can download a lot of stuff uh, in uh, invention, 1000inventions.com. The academic portal, which has got thousands of articles about various subjects, peer-reviewed, very important subjects. They are in muslimheritage.com. And for enriching the curriculum in schools, for your schools, for your kids, and so on, you can go to CE4, sorry, it should be CE4TF, but if you go to CE4CE, -E, I have to change that, because we changed the name, because it's now for the future. Okay? So it's, the last line is CE4TF, Curriculum Enrichment for the Future. Dot, dot org. Ah, sorry, this was the previous company. Okay, so it's dot org. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed being in Muscat. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Jazakumullah Khair. We're coming to an end. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashadu an la ilaha illa anta la astaghfiruka wa natubu alayka. Few announcements, very quickly. We're reminding you to fill the questionnaires again, please. Please, we do have Islamic Information Center in Oman. The office is in this premises. We have an office here for ladies and gents, sisters and brothers. And also, the working hours is 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. in the evening, every day, seven days a week. And there are also opening hours in the morning. Every day, Saturday to Wednesday, from uh, 9 to, to 11. Every, including Thursday, yes. From Saturday to Thursday, 9 to 11, and every day, 5 to 8 p.m. Anyone, to, anyone want to know about Islamic, I mean, more about Islam, you, you have somebody who wants to know more for free literature also, please, you can come to us, and uh, inshallah, we ask Allah to guide all of us. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa
شراب الحب يعرف بالمذاق وما كل السقات له بساق شراب الحب يعرف بالمذاق وما كل السقات له بساق أحب الله عن أدب وصدق ولا أرضى سوى التقوى خلا شراب يعرف بالمذاق وما كل السقات له بساق شراب الحب يعرف بالمذاق وما كل السقات له بساق أحب الله عن أدب وصدق ولا أرضى سوى التقوى خلاقي إذا ما عشت لا أنسى إلهي به أسمو من الأخرى المراقي يعز علي ترك الحب عندي ولو بلغت بي الروح التراقي تركت جميع خلق الله دوني شغلت عن الخلائق باشتياقي شراب الحب يعرف بالمذاق وما كل السقات له بساق شراب الحب يعرف بالمذاق